So our department at Lancaster has started a new internet radio show called The X Plus Y Factor, hosted by Paul Levy. And I appeared on this show about two weeks ago and set a problem on the show that I said I'd provide a solution. Um, so this video is intended as a solution to that problem. So I'm first going to tell you what the problem was, then provide a solution. So um, what was the problem? So the problem was about rational approximations of irrational numbers. And the example I used in the show was pi, which is of course about 3.141592 uh, something, 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 something. And this is an irrational number, but you can find some pretty good rational approximations to it. So maybe you know 22 over 7 is uh, approximately equal to pi. It's actually equal to 3.1428 something something something. So it's not equal to pi. It differs already in this uh, this digit here, but um, it's pretty close. And it's actually a very good approximation uh, in the sense that if you have an, a rational number where the denominator is at most 7, then you can't do any better than this. And actually, if you increase the denominator still further and you allow yourself fractions with an 11 at the bottom or a 13 at the bottom, you still can't do any better for quite a long time. It isn't until you get up to 355 over 113, which is uh, 3.141529, blah, 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 blah. It isn't until you get to this point that you do any better. This is even closer to pi, right? It's in degrees all the way up to here in the decimal expansion. Um, so it, it isn't until you have this very large denominator that you can really improve on this. And as you allow the denominator to increase still further, you get better and better approximations. And um, so we're interested in that sequence of rational approximations. So pi is quite difficult as numbers go. So um, the question I set wasn't about pi, it was about the golden ratio. So the golden ratio is um, 1 plus square root 5 over 2. It's uh, 1.618 something. Um, and I'll talk more about what this number is and where it comes from later in the video. Um, but let me tell you what the question was. The question was, find a sequence of rational approximations to 1 plus root 5 over 2 with increasing denominator and um, you know try and find the best rational approximations you can um, in in this same sense that we had up here that you know here seven uh, amongst fractions with seven in the denominator this was the closest and then you know you don't do any better until you get to this one um, and then so once you've found that uh, you should be able to spot a pattern and then you've got to explain the pattern so let's let's try and see what happens um, so What's the smallest possible denominator we could allow in a fraction? Well, 1 is the smallest possible denominator. So what is a fraction with 1 in the denominator? It's just an integer. So what's the closest integer to 1.618? It's 2, right? 2 is closer to this than 1. So uh, 2 over 1 right, with 1 in the denominator, that's a fraction which approximates this. And it's the closest thing with a 1 in the denominator. What happens if we allow a 2 in the denominator? Can we get any closer? Well, yes. 1.5 is, is 3 halves, and that's closer to 1.618 than the next one, which would be uh, 4 halves, or 2. Uh, so that's the next best rational approximation. What if we allow ourselves a 3 in the denominator? Let's think. Um, so what about 4 thirds? 4 thirds is, is 1.33333. Uh, 5 thirds would be 1.66666. Um, so if we increase the numerator any more, 
uh, we're going to get further away if we decrease the numerator anymore we're going to get further away so which of these two is closest to 1.618 it's five-thirds and actually that's closer than we already got right this this here was 1.5 and 1.6666 is closer to 1.618 than 1.5 is so five-thirds is another best rational approximation it's the best amongst the numbers we've seen so far let's um, move this out the way and increase the denominator one more let's allow fours in the denominator okay so if there's four in the denominator what about six fourths that's the same as three halves which is 1.5 which is no closer than we've already got seven fourths is uh, 1.75 that's also no closer than 1.666 which is the previous best rational approximation so we can't do any better by allowing a 4 in the denominator so we're going to ignore it and move on to 5 to move all the working down here so what about five in the denominator um, well uh, eight fifths is 1.6 and that's pretty close um, nine fifths would be 1.8 okay that's no good that's that's much further away than say 1.666 so uh, but actually this eight fifths is definitely closer than five thirds it's closer to 1.618 so this is another best rational approximation, eight-fifths. Best amongst all the numbers we've seen so far. Okay, so we've got two onths, three halves, five-thirds, eight-fifths. It turns out the next one is going to be thirteen-eighths. And now maybe you can start to see a pattern. So what are these numbers? Let me, let me just uh, get rid of this working out here. We don't really need it anymore. So what are these numbers? 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13. These are the Fibonacci numbers, right? So these are, this is the Fibonacci sequence. So the guess should be that if we take the ratio of two consecutive Fibonacci numbers as we move along the Fibonacci sequence that should be getting closer and closer to the golden ratio. That's our conjecture. So the n Fibonacci number over the previous Fibonacci, so, so the n minus one -th Fibonacci number. This should be a sequence of rational approximations for the golden ratio. So the question is can we explain why this is true? Um, um, so the answer is yes we can explain why it's true. Um, so let me try. I'll get a new page. So to explain why it's true, I really need to tell you what the golden ratio is rather than just saying it's 1 plus root 5 over 2. There's a better definition of the golden ratio. Um, so, and maybe, you, maybe you've seen this before. So the golden ratio is the number that has the following property. So it also has a fancy name. It's called phi. This is the notation for the golden ratio. Um, so it's the number that has the following property. If you draw a rectangle with side lengths 1 and phi, and then you cut out a square of side length 1 from this rectangle, then the bit that's left over, this um, rectangle I'm shading in blue here, is supposed to be uh, similar to the rectangle you started with. In other words, it's obtained by rescaling it and sticking on its side. 
So this is the, the defining uh, feature of phi, the blue rectangle that's left when you cut out this, uh, maybe I'll do as a red square. Um, is similar to the original rectangle. Similar here is in the technical mathematical sense of similar. It doesn't just mean it looks a bit similar, it means it's a rescaling. So they're obtained by rescaling and rotation. So here this, this uh, square here is, is really a square, so it's side length 1 and 1. So let's try and figure out the dimensions of this blue rectangle. Well, it has height 1 and it has side length um, phi minus 1. That's what's left after you cut out this square. And for this to be similar to the original rectangle, the ratio of the sides should be the same. So the ratio of the long side to the short side or of the short side to the long side should be the same. So let's let's do short side to long side. So in other words, the short side to the long side, that's 1 over phi, should be the same as short side to long side, that's phi minus 1. So in other words, the golden ratio is a solution of this equation. It satisfies 1 over phi equals phi minus 1. Let's just see for a second why that tells us that phi is... 1 plus root 5 over 2. Well, let's rearrange this equation by multiplying through by phi. If we multiply both sides by phi, we get 1 equals phi squared minus phi, and that's a quadratic equation for phi, which we can uh, rearrange to be phi squared minus phi minus 1 equals 0 and then solve using this uh, formula for solving quadratic equations which maybe you remember from school it's like minus b plus or minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a so here b is the the minus sign here so it's minus 1 a is the factor in front of this phi squared which is just 1 and c is the constant term which is minus 1 and if you just plug in the numbers, what you get is uh, minus minus 1, that's 1, plus or minus square root of 1 squared plus 4, so root 5, all divided by 2. Okay, so there's a plus or minus here, and we're going to take the plus because if you take the minus, you actually get a negative number, and phi was supposed to be the length of a side of a rectangle. So there's only one possibility where this is going to be uh, positive and that gives us the golden ratio okay but actually this equation that we started with um, is is where I'm gonna get the Fibonacci numbers from so I want to rewrite this equation in the following way I want to add 1 to both sides so I get phi equals 1 plus 1 over phi Okay, great, we've got a formula for phi, but unfortunately it involves phi, so that's kind of not so useful. If you have a formula for something that involves the thing you're trying to find, that's not very useful. However, we can do something really stupid, which is we can say, okay, well, we've got a formula for phi, right? Phi is 1 plus phi, no, sorry, 1 plus 1 over phi. We can substitute that in here. So we get 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over phi. All right, I've got a formula for phi. I'm just substituting that in where phi appears on the right-hand side. So we haven't really gained anything. We've just made a more complicated formula that still involves phi. Okay, so, well, you know, I'm feeling stupid today. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to get an even more complicated formula that still involves phi. So I really haven't gained anything. I've just made it incredibly complicated. It's like 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over phi. How am I going to get anything useful out of this? I'll, I'll do it again. Just see, uh, see what happens. 
1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over phi. Uh, it's still getting more and more complicated and phi is still there. I haven't really gained anything. So now what I'm going to do is just write dot dot dot. Which means I keep doing this infinitely often. And eventually what happens is the phi disappears off the page, right? Because, you know, I do it infinitely often, the phi kind of disappears. So eventually what I'm left with is uh, phi equals 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over dot dot dot. And this just means I keep doing this this um, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over infinitely often. And now, so magically the phi has disappeared. The point of this is that somehow the, the contribution I'm, you know, the, the amount this phi is contributing to this formula is getting smaller and smaller and smaller as as I iterate this operation. Um, so actually this formula we get to the end is a useful formula. It does make sense. Um, um, it, it seems like magical, right? Some, somehow we've done something that just made our formula more and more complicated and didn't get us anywhere. And in the end, we get a formula that we can actually use. Let me show how show you how you use it, right? It kind of looks still like you could never evaluate this. And it's true, you could never evaluate this completely. But you could truncate this at some level and just ignore the fire at that level and see what you get. So let's let's do that. Let me get a new page. So here's our formula. Um, let's let's just truncate this after two steps. 1 plus 1 over 1. And just ignore everything else. What's that? That's 1 plus 1. That's 2. So this, this shouldn't be an equals here, sorry. This should be an approximately equals. What happens if we truncate after three steps? We get 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 over 1. Um, so let's evaluate this. This is 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 3 halves. Let's truncate after 4 steps. We get uh, 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1, which is now, uh, let's see, 1 plus 1 over the previous thing. So 1 plus 1 over this whole thing in brackets. So we know what that is, that's 3 halves. 1 over 3 halves is 2 thirds, this is 1 plus 2 thirds. And that's, if we add fractions, that's 5 thirds. You see where I'm going with this? If I look back to my list of best rational approximations, it was 2, 3 halves, 5 thirds, the next one was 8 fifths, let's see if that's what we get. 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 1 over 1. Well, just for simplicity, this whole bit at the bottom is what we've already evaluated on the previous line. So we're getting 1 plus 1 over whatever we had, which is 5 thirds. That's 1 plus 3 fifths. Which, if you add fractions, that's 5 plus 3 over which is 8 fifths. And you can see what's happening here is at the next stage we're getting 1 plus 1 over sort of A over B, where A over B was the previous answer, which is then 1 plus uh, B over A, which is A plus B over A. Right, so if you have the answer at, at one stage, it's A over B, the next stage is going to be a plus b over a and that's why we're getting the Fibonacci numbers because that's exactly the recurrence relation involved in the definition of the Fibonacci numbers right the next Fibonacci number is the sum of the previous two which is is what's happening in in the numerator here so this does not explain why we're getting a sequence of best rational approximations um, in other words why these are doing better than any other rational numbers in the sequence but um, at least it, it tells you why why the Fibonacci numbers or the ratios of Fibonacci numbers give you a, a rational approximation of the golden ratio. Um, but it's a general fact that if you have an expression 
like like this infinite one here, it's always going to give you a sequence of best rational approximations. So this thing has a name, this is called a continued fraction. And I think they're absolutely amazing. So any number can be expanded as a continued fraction, uh, not with ones here, but maybe it's of the form sort of a1 plus 1 over a2 plus 1 over a3, etc. Um, so any number can be expressed like this. Uh, if it's a rational number, this is going to terminate. If it's an irrational number, it's going to go on forever. Um, and this always gives you a sequence of best rational approximations as you truncate uh, at some a n. So in setting this problem, I was hoping, you know, maybe you could figure out these uh, rational approximations of the golden ratio. And maybe you'd spot this pattern with the Fibonacci numbers and come up with this guess. Uh, that the ratio of Fibonacci numbers would eventually give you a very good approximation of the golden ratio. I wasn't necessarily expecting you to come up with an explanation. Uh, and even if you did come up with an explanation, I wasn't necessarily expecting you to come up with this one. There are various different ways of seeing it. Uh, another way that is covered in the Math 105 linear algebra course that I teach at Lancaster uh, involves eigenvectors and eigenvalues of two by two matrices. So. Uh, there's another video about that elsewhere on my YouTube channel. Um, uh, but even if you didn't come up with an explanation of this, I hope you had fun thinking about it and trying. Because after all, that's why we're doing maths.